here today with Steven Udius uh, with 13th level of structural engineering uh, firm out of San Antonio. Uh, we're here at Baltex to talk about uh, windstorm design uh, and, and what that means for buildings, uh, especially as we design along the coast. Uh, Stephen, welcome to Baltex today. Thank you, Chris. Uh, first and foremost, I uh, really wanted to talk um, about what we're designing for when we look at windstorm. Uh, I know that we're looking at not just the wind, but the storm surge, missile debris impact, all those things. If, if you could kind of give us some light into that, that'd be great. Yeah, windstorm is its own element. You know, it's obviously higher wind forces. You have uh, water rushing in from the, the ocean causing the, the storm surge, and then you also have a uh, wave impact on the structure itself. Um, and then, of course, uh, the gravity weight of the the self weight of the structure. Of the structure itself. The, the wind difference between uh, uh, maybe central Texas and the coast, uh, is, is there a dramatic difference there when you're, when you're designing for windstorm? Um, it can be quite different. I okay. mean, um, especially with the uplift and, and uh, overturning of the, the structure due to the, the high wind forces. Um, and obviously that's directly in, impactful for the, the wind pressures. So. Okay. And, and when you're, you're looking at that, uh, I know that uh, you can't look at the project in individual pieces. You really have to look at it holistically, right? The full design. So uh, can you kind of uh, talk to us a little bit about what works best, uh, what, what doesn't work uh, when it comes to windstorm design like that? Um, yes, I mean, you have your, over, your overall uh, wind forces, but when you get down to it, each component has to resist that wind pressure it's, it's seeing. So, uh, um, structural continuity across from the nailing to the, the shear transfer of the walls, mm -hmm. the shear transfer to the foundation, and then the connection of the foundation to resist the uplift from the wind forces. So you really have to be cognizant of how to apply the forces, what member and connection is going to resist that force, and how does it transfer it from the roof all the way down to the, the right. foundation bring it, level. Bringing that load path all the way Right, having a con continuous load path is, is key, especially in, a, in a wood wood framing. Sure. It's a very disconnected um, system. Um, it relies on its connections for its continuity, so those connections um, are definitely important in, in windstorm design. Okay. Is there a, uh, is there a type of building uh, that you would think might perform better, that you've seen perform better in, in a windstorm? environment. I, I know you've talked a little bit about wood framing. I don't know how you see uh, pre-engineered metal buildings do or concrete or masonry buildings. I don't know if you have a feel for, for what performs better than others. Um, I mean, they all can perform. Mm -hmm. they, they just have to be designed right. Um, the thing, a lot of the, the, the design failures you're seeing are, are panel failures right. where the, the sheathing, um, if you will, the, whether it be metal paneling, um, wood paneling, is becoming dislodged from from the main um, structure. Right. So, after you and that paneling provides the structural um, rigidity of the the structure and it uh, creates a diaphragm for the whole the right. load, once you, load path. Once you lose that diaphragm action, you you essentially lose the structure. And you've you've lost your shear force. At you've that lost point. your shear. And resistance. Transferring. To that point. Right. Sure. Um, in terms of uh, innovation, I know that uh, over the last few years, uh, the, the codes have kind of caught up with Windstorm, um, and, and we're, we're now relying upon more and more uh, hurricane ties and things like that, sure. uh, especially on wood frame. Uh, can you talk about uh, other innovations or, or what you're seeing in, in terms of, of being a Windstorm engineer? Yeah, definitely the, the, the metal ties connecting the you know the roof rafter to the stud plate, and right. then the stud to the the seal, and then the the seal connected to the foundation with the anchor bolts. Um, but I think one of the most innovation things is uh, um, the actual the Texas Department of Insurance now requiring you know buildings and structures that are going to be built in the a high wind zone. You know they have to comply with a certain um, first foremost they have to meet the design for the the code values, and then they have to the engineer of record has to implement those code values to the structure and then not only does he have to implement that he has to see the construction through that it gets built as he designed right so, so you're not just tossing it right to the field. Like, okay and, and inspecting someone to uh, you know install it in and per your drawing so i think the carry through mm -hmm. as far as engineer um you know, not only providing the design, but making sure that design is, is implemented in right. the field. And that's one, one thing that the, the TDI is doing is, 
you know, we're responsible for, for observing and inspecting the installation of, of, of the structure as it, gets, uh, as it gets constructed. Right. Definitely seems like an improvement to, to no, the way that definitely. things have done in the past. Well, good. We're going to continue having some windstorm conversations, especially as Baltex uh, continues to build along the coast. Uh, Stephen is, is one of our uh, consulting engineers and has done some projects with us down there in the past and will continue to do some uh, as, we, as we build here along the Texas coast. But to learn more about uh, Windstorm and, and how Baltex plays a role in the design of, of uh, resilient buildings um, in hurricane areas, check out BaltexSystems.com.